Hi, it's good to be with you again today as we dive into this fourth session on spiritual warfare. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul advises us that we are engaged in a spiritual battle. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against the tangible things that we even see in our natural environment. But there is a war that's raging. We've talked about that from various scriptures. Today we're going to dive right into Ephesians chapter 6. And Paul offers us today from this analogy or this metaphor that he is using of the Roman soldier being fully armored and prepared for battle. We have talked about various aspects of it. Today we're going to zero in on the shield of faith. And Paul says in chapter 6, take up the shield of faith indicating that it's an implement that's prepared for us. It's already there, and we simply have to engage it. Now, when we think of a shield, uh, you know, we may think of cartoon figures or science fiction figures, uh, Captain America, uh, you know, with his shield, but these are little small shields they will with their hands. Roman soldiers would have uh, had a shield that actually reached from about here all the way down to below their knees. It was quite an artifact. This shield covered the bigger part of their body. It certainly covered all their vital organs, their liver, kidneys, heart. This old area was protected. Paul says that we are to use the shield of faith against the fiery darts of the enemy. In Roman times, offending forces would often set uh, darts or arrows on fire and shoot them uh, at their uh, enemies. And so Paul uses this analogy here. As a matter of fact, we read in Psalm chapter 7, and verse 13, Paul may have drawn from David's writings, He as prepared his deadly weapons, he makes ready his flaming arrows, speaking against the enemy that comes against us. Again, in Psalm 120 and verse 4, the psalmist wrote, He will punish you with a warrior's sharp arrows, with burning coals on the broom bush. And so we know these were implements that was used in warfare, in ancient warfare. And Paul tells us that in the spirit realm, the enemy forges and forms these weapons, these, these uh, fiery darts, and they fires them at us in the heat of the battle. How does this come into being? You know, just think for a moment. Uh, for someone who has lost a loved one, uh, we have had significant losses in our life road and high. Uh, we've stood by the gravesides of so many precious people that we love. And there's, there's always the, the nagging voice in you says, how will I ever cope with this? How will I make it through this? Uh, uh, there's also, you know, the seeming finality of death. But you know, when we take up the shield of faith, you know what we do? We take up the word of God. We look to the promises that are in the word of God. And what does the word of God say? It says, he will not put more upon us than he will give us grace to bear. So when the enemy says you will be overwhelmed, the God's word says no. As a matter of fact, it says when the enemy comes in, come like a flood, the spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. And we begin to take up these scriptures and hurl them back at the enemy, Jesus, in that great temptation when he stood before Satan after 40 days of fasting. Uh, what did he will back at Satan? Uh, you know, Satan said, you know, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father. You know, so Jesus was wielding the, the, uh, the sword of the Spirit, but also the shield of faith. He was standing in faith. You know, when we stand beside a graveside, we begin to hear the voice of the Spirit saying, and the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall raise, be raised first. And, and these, when we, when we begin to get this belief, this conviction in our heart, it's not merely just wielding the sword in terms of throwing back scriptures. We'll talk about that. That's, it's in the sword of the spirit. But it is, it is standing with a position of conviction that we know where we stand. We know whereof we speak. We have great trust and confidence in the word of God, for we have proven it. We can reflect back and say, no, you know, God will not put more upon us than he will give us grace to bear. Because I can remember when I went through that very difficult time and the Lord took me through that time. And then this faith begins to emerge. Matter of fact, the scripture tells us that, uh, that actually faith then comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
And so as we let the word of God seep into our hearts and then we pray it into our spirits and we allow the Holy Spirit to, to speak it and break it abroad in our hearts, faith emerges and we are able to stand with boldness and confidence knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. We have to hold on to the shield of faith. We have to take it up. Uh, there's a stance, there's a position. It could slip from us. And so it's important that we recognize as believers in this battle that there is the constant process of taking up, of repositioning ourselves, of taking a stance, of restating our convictions in the face of the enemy. And as we do this, uh, we will overcome. Lee Strobel says, um, faith comes when we have enough evidence to make an informed decision. It's not blind faith. Uh, we're not just talking here, you know, cake in the sky. No. Uh, Strobel uh, gives an illustration. He talks about a person he was interviewing, uh, and, uh, and the eye doctor, uh, it was, this person was to go and have an eye surgery. And it was a very delicate eye surgery, and it could have resulted in blindness. But the individual, the interviewee said, you know, I researched the doctor well. I researched his, uh, his past history, his credentials, and I looked at some of his case studies, and I realized, you know, he can do this successfully. So he went and had his eye surgery. It was based on information that was well formulated and documented. And so, you know, when we come to the Word of God, we have the stories from Old Testament narrative and New Testament that shows where God has been faithful, where God stood by his people, where God always came through in difficult situations. And so, you know, we're not being asked to have blind faith. No, you can get the word of God, break it abroad, let the Holy Spirit speak it into your hearts. Look at your own experience, look at the experiences of others, analyze these things, and this helps you formulate your convictions and stand with the firmness of having the shield of faith uh, to withstand these fiery darts of the enemy. I encourage you today, pray that God will show you how to just take up the shield of faith, how to wield it accurately, influentially against the enemy. Uh, just continue to put on those pieces of armor, one by one by one, and you will stand in a strong place in God. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord.